We are quickly approaching the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft, if you can believe it. Uh, I'm fairly certain by at least a few metrics this has to rank amongst the most successful longest running live service games. Although back when it released, we didn't call it a live service, that phrase didn't really exist actually. It was just an MMO, but yeah, WoW has done pretty well for itself over these past two decades. Yes, the game is far from its heyday, but the fact that it's even still around drumming up new interest in players, that alone is impressive. 20 years is a very long time for a video game, especially in today's age where most games fail to maintain their player base past a few weeks. Maybe even more impressive though is the fact that in recent years things seem to be on a bit of an upswing. They're nowhere near Wrath of the Lich King numbers for sure, but interest in the game is rising thanks to the advent of classic era servers, the introduction of new modes like Hardcore and the Seasons, plus the latest retail expansion Dragonflight has by most accounts been well received. If you enjoy MMOs but for whatever reason never gave WoW a shot, you never checked out the game for yourself, or if you used to play WoW and are curious about returning to it, I wanted to share a little bit of my experience having come back to the game recently. Maybe this helps you decide if you might want to give it a go for the first time or to come back to it. What initially spurred my latest relapse into World of Warcraft was the introduction of official hardcore classic servers. If you're unaware, this takes the classic era version of the game and adds hardcore mode where if you die, that's it. Your character is gone for Forever. It's a uh, fairly brutal way to play the game, but with these high stakes come some really interesting, exciting, and often hilarious outcomes. The leveling up process that otherwise might be considered mundane becomes a lot more tense. Every cave you enter, every mob you pull, every movement near a cliff, everything has this added air of danger due to the fact that a single mistake could spell the end of your run. I was originally really hesitant to even try Hardcore Classic for this reason. I didn't love the idea of losing hours or days even of time due to making a single mistake but I have to say after playing for these past several weeks um, it just makes the entire thing a lot more exciting and engaging I have lost count now of the number of times that I've nearly escaped death each one of those moments pretty memorable oh my oh my god you gotta be kidding me oh man that was close son of a Oh, great. This is not looking great. Oh, sh- Oh my god, bro. Oh, shut. Zuh. Back it up. This is why you shouldn't stream hardcore. I'm just like walking into the very difficult fight without prepping, without making sure my buffs are up. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> this is the site. This is the site. This is the hardcore classic site. <laughs> This Murloc fucking booking it for someone. Oh god. How you doing? You alright? And the other thing that this added sense of danger really does to the experience is spur on a whole lot more community interaction, engagement, and support. I've actually never seen this level of cooperation between players while leveling in an MMO as I have in Classic Hardcore. In fact, in pretty much every instance that I've seen other players out in the world, there has been some level of teamwork and coordination taking place. It seems like people just sort of gravitate towards helping each other as we all know the consequence of death. On the small scale, this entails things like, you know, players buffing each other as they pass by. But on the larger scale, you will constantly see healers topping off other players' health. And if someone happens to pull too many enemies, you will see other nearby players like coalesce, collapse in to engage and help them out. And I am seeing this all the time. Without fail, people are helping each other. There has been a handful of times where I've literally saved somebody's character. Someone who engaged with two, three or more mobs was down to a sliver of health. I would heal them up to full, before helping to kill the enemies. And this has happened numerous times in reverse as well, where I have been the one who was saved. It really feels awesome and adds a big sense of community and some jolly cooperation to the World of Warcraft. I have loved it, honestly. Although I would be lying if I said that the times where I have witnessed a player deaths were anything but hilarious in particular. At one point when I was leveling in Red Ridge, I came across a duel to the death, which is exactly like it sounds on hardcore servers, the loser of the duel, their character is gone forever.
I mean, I felt kind of bad because the mage looked like they had no idea what was going on and what they were doing. But the funniest part of all wasn't the rogue deleting the, the mage. It was the other person coming in after the fact and what looked to be finishing off a conversation they had had prior in which he told them, see guys, I told you the dude was total garbage. Like I just, I, I literally almost died laughing. It was just one of the funniest moments. Yeah, man, it goes without saying at this point, hardcore classic has been a total blast. Now, I don't know how many times I will want to reroll a character after mine dies, but in the meantime, I have been having loads of fun. The sense of danger has been making playing the game all the more exciting. The cooperation that comes while leveling has created a real strong sense of community. And yeah, when I do witness deaths, it's been a pretty funny experience. I think hardcore classic alone is enough of a reason to come back and check out the game, but there's a whole lot more on the horizon that I'm really excited for as well. Season of Discovery is another new thing coming to Classic WoW. So this is not hardcore, it's separate, deaths are not permanent, but it does do quite a few things that add new twists. Basically, Season of Discovery takes the base version of Classic Era World of Warcraft and adds a bunch of brand new content. Discoveries have been hidden all throughout Azeroth, finding them rewards new skills and talents for every class, which opens up more utility and variety, but also introduces new roles such as tanking warlocks and mage healers. There will be these tiered end games starting with phase one that has a level cap of 25. So when season of discovery launches, players will only have to reach level 25 and then can start working towards collecting best in slot gear for that level. Some of which they'll get from the new level 25 end game content. This includes a revamped BFD changing the five player group dungeon into a 10 player 20 level 25 raid with new bosses and new loot drops. And there's a brand new open world PVP event where where they are turning Ashenvale into sort of a mini Alteric Valley with faction leaders on both sides, camps that buff those leaders, and then rewards for killing other players as well as being on the winning faction. This is basically them dipping their toes into Classic Plus, taking the core of the original game, adding and expanding upon it while ideally keeping the base design philosophies, the, the things that made Classic WoW, Classic WoW, trying to keep those things intact, which is very exciting for a lot of reasons. And we'll get into those, after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Jagex. If Season of Discovery gets you excited as much as it does for me, you might want to hear about this. Leagues 4 Trailblazer is Old School RuneScape's latest league, a seasonal mode which runs until mid-January. It's a fast-paced version of Old School RuneScape with huge experience boosts, loot drops, and powerful relics which offer various buffs and abilities that change the game in ways you couldn't imagine. Player counts are higher than they've ever been. Lots of people are starting fresh, making now a great time to try Old School RuneScape for yourself. So if you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the video description below. But now let's get back to WoW and Season of Discovery. So this is actually the upcoming WoW content that I'm most excited for out of everything. More than I am for what I'm currently playing in Classic Hardcore, more than Classic Cataclysm, and even more than the upcoming retail expansions. Yes, as I said, Season of Discovery is basically Blizzard dipping their toes into the pool of Classic Plus. The idea of which is to keep the core structure systems and design philosophies of Classic Era World of Warcraft but expand upon and add to it. So rather than making classic more like retail, they're making more of classic. When Season of Discovery first releases, they'll be doing this in a few ways. As I mentioned, they've added these things called discoveries. Now, as the name applies, these are meant to create a sense of discovery in what is otherwise a solved game. So when you first make a new character, things will appear as usual. You'll start just like traditional classic, going through the normal leveling process in your starting zone. Everything will be just as you remember, but then at some point early on, you're gonna receive a quest to go and locate your first discovery. Now, these are these new secrets scattered around the world that reward primarily new class abilities. The first one you'll find through that initial quest that guides you to it, but after that, you're gonna have to locate the rest of them on your own. To put more accurately, the community will locate them and then you will find out where they found it. But some of these you may very well find on your own, but it won't be easy because these will be unmarked. There will be no map indicators or anything hinting or pointing out their locations. As a result, there will be very difficulties in locating these. Sometimes it could be a simple chest that's hidden in a cave that you've been a thousand times or maybe hidden behind a waterfall. Other times you might have to navigate a jumping puzzle, climbing atop buildings, trees, or mountaintops, or there might be discoveries that are locked behind a door and require multiple people standing on pressure plates in order for that door to open. Either way, the end result is you find a discovery and doing so unlocks a brand new class skill or talent 
from this new rune system. So runes will be granting new and sometimes these retroactively added abilities, skills, and talents for every single class. During the first phase of Season of Discovery, there will be 12 runes for you to unlock, 12 new abilities for every class in the game. Now, the system basically does two things. It makes previously useless specs now viable in Classic WoW. For example, Retribution Paladin, kind of a meme. The only thing the class does is put up a seal and auto attack, basically. Well, with these new runes, uh, Ret Paladins will now have access to things like Crusader Strike and Divine Storm, and even a Silence. And it also opens up entirely new playstyles, introducing things like Warlock Rogue and Shaman Tanks, or Mage Healers. Yes, you heard that right. Warlocks, Rogues, and Shamans will all be getting these new defensive tailored abilities, as well as Taunts, so they can actually do tanking. And Mages are getting both a single and multi-target healing ability. It's pretty crazy stuff. It's really going to mix things up. All of which means whole new playstyles and metas are going to form. And now I want to talk about the tiered release. Now, as I mentioned this first phase a few times, that is because Season of Discovery is releasing in four separate phases, each of which will have their own limited time, end game, and subsequent metas. And this is actually what is most exciting for me about this whole thing. So at launch, the level cap for phase one is level 25, giving players time to reach that cap, gear up, unlock their class runes, and then try different builds. In that window of time where everyone's level 25 with the 12 new class runes that they'll be having, they'll be min-maxing and trying to make these different low-level builds and gear, that is super exciting for me. It's really going to shake things up. Basically, what I'm most excited about is how this relates to PvP. One of my favorite things in original WoW, you know, 2004, 2005 for vanilla and then leading into Burning Crusade and into Wrath of the Lich King. During that period of time, I was playing World of Warcraft pretty much every day for like five years straight. And one of my favorite things to do besides focused on the main progression was to make low level characters for low level PvP. The level 19 bracket, the 29 bracket and the 39 bracket. It was really enjoyable because it was accessible and it was different from the main meta, the uh, max level meta in each one of those expansions, right? And I always really enjoyed that. And this is basically going to be a way to experience that. Starting at level 25 is going to be the first phase, and then phase two is level 40, phase three is level 50, and then the final fourth phase is level 60. We're basically going to get that version of this lower level, uh, different meta PvP all the way up to 60. And then even at 60, it's going to be different as well, but it's still going to be classic. And I think it's that combination of things that's really exciting for me. These different potentials, these different possibilities, these different class strengths, and these different meta and these tiered end games. I just absolutely love it. And I love the approachability of phasing it as well. It's not that bad to get to level 25, might even make multiple characters level 25, get their runes, get their best in slot gear and try things out in the low level PVP. And there is going to be even new low level PVP with the inclusion of Warsong Gulch being unlocked. All of this really, really exciting for me. So in that first phase, one of the new contents is actually going to be PVE based. We're getting a new version of Black Fathom Deeps. Uh, what was previously that small group dungeon changes into a 10 man level 25 raid. This will include revamped and new boss encounters along with brand new loot, much of which we will expect will be the best in sock gear for that level 25 bracket as there's a lot of blue gear dropping in this raid. And I actually got to play through a portion of this at uh, BlizzCon just the other month. It was really cool. I got to see those first three boss encounters. I think they said there's going to be like seven to 10 bosses in total. I don't recall the exact number, but I got to play the first three, managed to actually clear all of them with one of the groups that I played with. It wasn't terribly difficult, but it did require some coordination and it was just fun to see. Like it was neat to see new content added to classic WoW. But then with the tiered release, uh, the BFD revamp isn't going to be the only one. They actually already have teased plans for other raids that will be coming in the future phases. We saw clips of Nomergan, Scarlet Monastery, and the Karzan Crypts. So these uh, may very well end up being new raids as we move up those phases. But the level 25 raid is one thing. I'll do it for the gear. Eventually we'll learn the fights and it'll be on farm mode um, before not too long. That's my expectation. The number one hype thing for me for Season of Discovery is definitely, like I mentioned, with these new abilities and these uh, tiered caps, the PvP, the low-level PvP, the mid-level PvP, I cannot wait. So they're going to be adding a whole new world PvP event to Ashenvale. It's going to work sort of reminiscent to Altaric Valley. Faction leaders for both Horde and Alliance, multiple camps around the zone, buffing each of the leaders. If you clear the camps, it weakens the leader, making it easier to take the leader out. Now, beyond the fact that PvP will be taking place all over the zone, this new event is also going to give something that requires some coordinated effort if you want to be on the victorious side. And you might, you probably want to be on the winning team because they are rewarded a bunch of Warsong Gulch honor. And 
and there will be reward vendors with uh, level 25 gear for you to collect, along with a short-term fairly strong world buff for the winning team. They're also introducing these level 25 mounts that you can earn, exclusively usable in Ashenvale. New skills, new metas. It's just going to be a total blast to do low-level PvP. I loved it back in the day. I am so excited to try it in Season of Discovery. So Season of Discovery is launching really soon on November the 30th. There's no PTR, and hopefully that keeps some of the discovery of these rune locations a bit of a secret. I know we're going to probably find them before not too long, and that's probably for the best because people just want to unlock their new abilities, right? But there's so much about Season of Discovery that I'm really, really looking forward to. Funny enough, that is not all for Classic WoW. The Classic Progression servers are moving forward from Wrath of the Lich King into Cataclysm. So with this, it comes with everything you expected from Cata, everything that was in Cata, the introduction of both goblins and worgen as new playable races. There'll be seven new zones and three starting zones for those two new races, new dungeons and raids, a new level cap of 85, and a bunch of other stuff like transmogs, new dungeon difficulty system, updated auction house, account-wide mounts, and more. To be perfectly honest, I'm not too interested here. Like maybe I'll jump in and briefly check out Cata, level up a character just to go through the old zone for like reminiscing. I don't care to spend a bunch of time on the WoW Classic progression servers. I'm way more interested in Classic Hardcore and Classic Season of Discovery, but then also the retail version of the game, which brings us to the latest expansion, which is Dragonflight. As far as I've seen, this is in a really good spot. Now, I gotta say, just as a baseline, you should know that I played every single WoW expansion, at least for a little bit. Come back for every expansion, usually for a month or two at a time. But for whatever reason, I haven't played Dragonflight yet myself. I don't know, when it came out, I was busy with other stuff. And throughout the course of this past year, I just haven't jumped in. But I am planning to. At this point, my, my plan is to jump in like one or two months before the next expansion comes out, just to run through do all the leveling up, try the dungeons and raids, and get the catch-up gear. That's my plan. Even without personal experience, I have heard almost uh, unanimously that this is one of the better WoW expansions that we've seen in recent memory. Bunch of new stuff. There's a new playable race, Drakthir, and with that comes the new Evoker class. It's a hero class like Death Knights, so it starts at a higher level. You choose what faction you want to uh, fight for. It's got two specs, a ranged DPS and a healer spec, and this is sort of more of like a support focus role, which is really cool. It can also glide around like a demon hunter hunter and you can even fly while casting which is really cool they did a bunch of stuff that people were really hyped for like uh, a revamp of the talent system which funny enough i actually got to see that in the end of shadowlands when i was playing basically the pre-patch before dragonflight i don't know why i ended up playing the pre-patch for shadowlands and not playing dragonflight don't ask but yeah they basically went back to more classic inspired talent system and people seem to really enjoy it i recall liking it when i played it in shadowlands in the pre-patch for dragonflight they've also done things like uh, revamped the UI, adding a lot more of the add-ons that people regularly use into the base version of the game. And they added dragon riding, probably one of the coolest things. They basically took the amazing system that is flying mounts and just all of the mounts really in Guild Wars 2, and they added something along those lines for World of Warcraft. Essentially, the way to think of it is it feels like a actual flying mount instead of just like a transportation vehicle that takes you at a flat percentage speed increase through the air and then landing on the ground. It has movement, it has inertia, it has momentum that you can build up. It's really great. It's amazing in Guild Wars 2. I've heard Blizzard's done a fairly decent job of emulating that here in World of Warcraft with dragon riding. Uh, and then Dragonflight has all the expected new stuff. We got new zones, new story, new dungeons and raids. There's also apparently a lot of cool world quests and events, more horizontal progression in the game, and they made some pretty big changes to professions that people seem to like. Nearly everyone that I've heard talk about this expansion has said it's pretty great. One of the best, actually, uh, that's been the general sentiment. I have seen people uh, make some complaints about like the story in the game. I don't care. I've played WoW on and off for nearly 20 years now and I could tell not tell you a single like main thoroughly detailed explanation of any of the story uh in vanilla Ragnaros was the fire guy and we had to kill him uh burning crusade uh Illidan was in jail for 10,000 years and he's really pissed off Wh which yeah that makes sense and what happened in Wrath of Lich King oh yeah uh Arthas uh, climbed a mountain and froze to death and then we had to go kill him or s I don't I just don't care. So people who are upset about the story in Dragonflight, uh, I, I wish it was better for you. 
doesn't bother me at all. All around, this expansion looks fantastic. I am actually really excited to jump back in. I watched a great video from a fellow Guild Wars 2 aficionado and addict. Well, he's he knows way more than me, but Bloom, if you've heard of him, really great guy, and he did a great World of Warcraft Dragonflight review, basically, and uh, I really enjoyed the video, so be sure to give that a look. Give him a sub, too. He's a cool dude. Now, that is current retail, but at BlizzCon, they actually revealed the next three planned expansions for the game, all tied together with what is an overarching narrative. Oh, great. I love those, right? As you just heard. So the first expansion is slated to release in 2024. This is called The War Within. Some more notable features include Delves, which is this new endgame pillar content. It's kind of like dungeons, but it's like solo with groups of up to four, I believe. Delves sound just like kind of more interesting twist on a PvE activity. I'm excited to learn and see more. They've introduced Warbands, which is basically just their fancy word for account-wide progression. They're introducing hero talents, which are like further specialization for the classes into these more iconic roles. This seems really cool. There's the new allied race of the Earthen, which are basically stone dwarves. Introducing dynamic flying outside of Dragonflight, so that Guild Wars 2 inspired dragon riding is coming to the base flying mounts in the game. That is awesome. And then yes, with the new expansion comes all the new stuff, new zones, stories, new dungeons, raids, new gear, all of that. And then after War Within, we already know the following expansions are going to be titled Midnight and The Last Titan, and all of these are going to be connected together and releasing in subsequent years. So that is World of Warcraft, and man, I gotta say, between Classic Hardcore, between Classic Season of Discovery, with Dragonflight, with the upcoming expansion, there are like so many different ways to play and enjoy WoW, and right now, personally, I've been having a total blast with Hardcore Classic. I am very excited, more so than I, I am for Hardcore. I'm very excited for Season of Discovery for all the reasons I mentioned. And Dragonflight, by all accounts, like I said, people really love it. Story aside, people love the game. That's the part I care about. And I'm looking forward to playing that. I'm supposed to play other games and there's like four different versions of World of Warcraft that I want to play. It's actually kind of nuts, but that's where we're at right now. That is the World of Warcraft. And hopefully this video give you a better idea just from one person's perspective about where the game sits right now I'll shared with you what I enjoy and maybe if you enjoy some of those things it might be a time to check out the game again but yeah man it's astounding 20 years on 13 different versions of WoW to play right now and many of them I'm, I'm really looking forward to or currently enjoying so pretty cool stuff that's gonna do it for this video though thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it before we go one final word from today's sponsor. Thanks again to Jagex for sponsoring today's video. Remember to check out Leagues for Trailblazer Reloaded for a new way to play old school RuneScape with huge experience and loop boost and insane buffs and power-ups. Once again, links available in the description below.